Welcome to the channel, thanks a lot for joining me. I'm looking at whether the takeover of Newcastle United is actually a bad thing for the rest of the Premier League. To be fair, this has happened before, obviously started with Chelsea, then it started with uh, Man City, and then obviously you've had quite a few American owners who've come in, the Glazers at Man United, Liverpool American owners before Fenway Sports, and now um, you know they've got Fenway Sports there. So there has been foreign ownership in the Premier League. So why is this? Premier League is a international competition. People living in the UK, if you don't travel very much, you don't realise how widely watched the Premier League is. Everywhere you go, people know who Premier League players are. They'll even know who Wolverhampton Wanderers are. They wouldn't know where Wolverhampton was maybe before Wolves went into the Premier League, but now that Wolves are in the Premier League, they'd know something about it. And actually, fans that come and watch Premier League football would have their eyes open to different parts of the UK. So the UK government and the Premier League understand that this product, and it is a product, and it is about money, is worth an awful lot of money. And as a result, I think their primary objective is to ensure the maximisation of profit. And actually, the Saudis coming into Newcastle will be hugely profitable for all, most of the clubs in the Premier League. Because if you think about it, now... You've got a club that was previously spending very little money in the transfer market will now be buying quite a lot of players. They'll be buying those players maybe from Manchester United, from Liverpool, maybe from Chelsea, and that money will flow into those clubs. So these kind of squad players from United that Newcastle may buy will, will provide a financial boost for the owners of Manchester United. So on that level, the takeover by the Saudis of Newcastle United isn't a bad thing. On another level, you have the accusation of sports washing that the Saudis have only bought Newcastle to try and project a different image of their society and of you know their country generally. But if you look at the Qataris who've bought Paris Saint-Germain or you look at the Emiratis who've bought Manchester City, as owners, just forget the politics for a minute, as owners... They're unbelievable owners. If you're, an, if you're the average fan of one of those clubs and you don't really know much about politics and you don't really care that much, this is a great thing for you. So on that level, that's really positive. In terms of the Premier League, in terms of competition, it's going to be much harder to win the Premier League. You've got City who essentially are able to purchase any player in the world they choose and in terms of their budgetary limitations they don't have one and actually the Saudis make Man City's owners look quite poor really so again you've got that at stake that you've got what another you've got another Man City on steroids in the Premier League it was already hard to win the Premier League I mean Man City have won the league six times out of the last 10 years basically. So they've basically dominated the last decade. Man United haven't got anywhere near it. Liverpool have won one. Chelsea have obviously won Leicester. But it's going to be increasingly more difficult to wrestle power from Man City and from Newcastle because if they have a poor season, they're able to go into the transfer market in a big way. Fenway Sports run Liverpool in a very responsible way. Klopp has worked wonders. It pains me to say it as a Man United fan. Klopp has worked wonders on a relatively small budget. The Glazers have spent quite a lot of money. However, they've spent it poorly and the, and the club is still in debt. Abramovich, after their transfer ban, has basically spent about £400 million. So he's got really deep pockets as well. So, you know, these are the type of levels of spending that you're up against. Now, spending money doesn't guarantee success, but the chances of you being successful increase considerably. If you keep buying the best players available, at some point you're going to get a good team together and you're going to win. It took Man City a bit of time to do it. They had a few duds. They bought, you know, Wilfred Boney. They bought like Mangala. But generally, once they got, when, once they started winning, and they could start to attract elite players and they started to win Premier Leagues and be competitive, they've basically got probably the best squad in world football, or it's up there anyway. So. It's definitely going to be harder to win the Premier League, but the Premier League may benefit by the players that the Saudis will buy. What other factors have we got to consider? Well, I feel like Newcastle, the northwest of England, northeast of England, 
these areas have been promised to be leveled up by this current government in the UK. Now, I don't want to get into politics, but the Conservative Party won the last election mainly because of something called the Red Wall voting for Tories. Look it up and you'll understand what I'm talking about. But basically, you've got traditional post-industrial places in the northeast, northwest of England who traditionally voted for Labour. And one of the reasons, one of the ways that the Conservative Party managed to win this election was to turn those traditional Labour voters in those northern towns and cities and turn them into Conservative voters. And one of the pledges they gave was to level up. Now, levelling up is basically ensuring that towns and conurbations have like investment into them, the transport links are sorted out. You've got like, you know, new kind of attractions inside of the cities. And they've they've got a fund to do this. I think it's called the Township or the Towns Fund. And you're able to apply as a town or a city and get funding. Now, the Saudis are going to do this on steroids. The Saudis are going to level up Newcastle city centre and the city of Newcastle. And they're going to invest heavily. Make no mistake, in a few years, they may start to buy up reams and reams of land and create maybe, you know, small stadiums or casinos or shopping centers or offices, whatever. But that, that money is going to go into the local economy. And actually, you may say, oh, it's dirty money. It's, you know, it's blood money, whatever. But if you live in the northwest of England like I do, or you live in the northeast of England and you go to smaller towns, you go to Wigan or you go to Sunderland or you go to Southport or you go to, you know, Bolton, places like this. Those places have been underinvested in for years and years and years. So actually, by the South, the Saudis coming there can do something very similar to what Manchester City did in East Manchester. They took a pretty deprived area. And now if you go there, it's actually a beautiful, lovely place to live. So they're going to level up Newcastle city centre and that can only be a good thing for the people of Newcastle. So all in all, Newcastle being taken over by the Saudis is a bad thing for other teams in the Premier League because their chances of winning are going to be lower. However, for the, for the people of Newcastle and the, the Newcastle United fans and actually the northeast of England, you may see increased investments and that actually may improve people's lives. I'm not defending anything that anyone else does because it's not my actions i'm not defending what the saudis do or what you know anyone does but what i'm talking about on a day-to-day -day level on a human level you may have more job opportunities you'll have more investment you'll have maybe colleges and universities you might have more sort of tourists from the gulf states coming to support newcastle bring money who will need hotels so it can only be a good thing especially if you look at the post-industrialized north of england that's been chronically underinvested in so they're my thoughts what do you think please give me your thoughts i know there's been i've had some comments about human rights concerns and i get that but what do you think overall about this takeover thanks for watching i appreciate your time